Hello everyone, I am Be Better Gamer. Welcome to Be Better Gamer Wrestling. This channel is dedicated to wrestling video games fueled by my love, passion, and obsession for them. Today I am playing Virtual Wrestling 2. I am actually bringing you another one of my original call designs for Virtual Wrestling 2. I'm using the English translation patch. I get a lot of questions about like, how, did, how are you getting the text in English for this Japanese game? I'm using the English translation patch. You can check on that in the description below. I have a video all about it. But I am bringing you today Tetsuya Naito, leader of Los Ingobernables de Japón. One of the most charismatic, most popular stars in New Japan Pro Wrestling today. I'm very excited about this call. If you've been following me on twitch.tv slash BeBetterGamer, you've seen me working on this call in the past couple of weeks. Even last night, the day before I'm recording this video, I was playing with the Naito call. So that's why you need to follow me on twitch.tv slash BeBetterGamer so you can see my call designs as they're being workshopped. But for the fighting style, of, um, you know, the profile, moves, computer intelligence, all that stuff you will be able to find in the description below. I will have a link to a Google spreadsheet where all of that is typed out for you. There I go, showing you, look, the British fall. That's what I use as the substitute for the destino. Uh, <laughs> you know, you got to use your imagination for that. But let's go ahead. Let's do the appearance right now. So we start off, we got head to... That's what we start off with, face 56. And there's a few other faces that work well, just as well for Naito, but I went with face, face 56. For hair, I went with hair one, number four, and hair two, 49. Color is brown, as you can see. I used the brown color, I forgot to pull it up in the video. And for facial hair, I went with facial hair two. Body type, we went with four, uh, and the number one skin tone. For the ring of tights, we're actually using the Mark Kerr tights, and I think they look pretty well for Naito, zero and three, black and red, standard colors. For equipment, we gave him the red wristbands, um, which is color three again for wristband number one. And then for the knee pads, once again, one of my favorite knee pads to use for a lot of my New Japan <laughs> created wrestlers is knee pad number seven, the bomb knee pads, if you will, the Keje Mudo knee pads. Uh, and we alternate with black and red for this one and then a9 are the boots boots he wears white boots he usually has like these like lassos and tassels coming off the boots can't really do that in this game but we just give him plain white boots and that's it that's the first base Naito call second one is exactly the same with the exception of the knee pads the knee pads I just changed to black for both of them I wish I could do the coloring of the letters red as well as I wish I could do like you know usually he wears um, he wears like this sort of like tape behind the knee pads. I'm guessing to like protect his knees. That's something you see often when he wears his knee pads. This is based on his earlier uh, outfit when and during you know his days of being a baby face before Los Ingobernables. His red and white outfit teaming up with Yujiro Takahashi as part of Team No Limit and his you know singles run. Uh, that wasn't well received and we'll talk about that for a little bit But basically just turn everything to red and white and then for the fourth attire his you know Accompanying someone to the ring attire, which is usually what happens with the fourth character slot I gave him this black and white shirt now I don't know what the lettering on this shirt means, but let's all imagine it says Los Ingobernables you, <laughs> you know what I mean the team no fear shirt actually works pretty well also, if you want to go in that direction, because in the back of the Team No Fear shirt, they have the eyes. Um, so you can use that. But that's how I made Naito. Again, this is not the best way to make Naito, the, the perfect way to make Naito. This is just how I, Be Better Gamer, made Naito. And I would love to see uh, what changes you probably would make to this call or, you know, what other comments uh, you want to, you know, talk about this call in, in down below. So let me know your feelings, your thoughts on this Naito call. Remember to check the description for the full call so you can get all the moves, parameters, all that stuff. And as always with all my calls, as you can see some of them there in the lineup, I'm going to be playing a match. And I'm actually going to be playing against another one of my calls that I made for Virtual Pro Wrestling 2 a while back. And that's my Okada call. Obviously last year's Wrestle Kingdom main event. Kazuchika Okada versus Tetsuya Naito for the IWGP Heavyweight Championship 
And, you know, a lot of people love, love Naito right now. And, you know, him being the cool, charismatic leader of Los Ingobernables. Oh, real quick, I should mention also, if you want to check out my Okada call, make sure you check the description below for that. Uh, I always sometimes forget to mention that when I do my other calls. People ask me, like, oh, what about this other call? It's like, it's all in the description. Always read my description. I have a lot of fun links in there. Um, but Naito and Okada main evented Wrestle Kingdom, and everyone loves Naito now. But, you know, who he is now as Los Ingobernables leader, as this really cool, charismatic, popular wrestler in New Japan, really only started to, like, formulate a few years back. Because when Naito was first wrestling in New Japan, he started off as a junior heavyweight, um, which a lot of people don't really know about. And he was part of primarily a tag team with Yujiro Takahashi. Yes, that Yujiro, the Tokyo Pimps Yujiro. Him and Naito were a tag team called No Limit. And they were a fairly popular young tag team. People were into them into the beginning. Um, you know, they started out at junior heavyweights. They captured the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship. And then they went to Mexico and wrestled for about a year or so. When they came back, they came back as heavyweights, as a heavyweight tag team competing for the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. And then what started to happen was Naito started to break out on his own and being sort of pushed as a singles wrestler, trying to rise the ranks of the heavyweight division. Obviously him and Yujiro would split and they would feud, but you would see Naito involved with some, you know, pretty notable matches and pretty notable feuds with some of the more popular wrestlers of New Japan at the time. And I'm talking like around 2011-ish, 2012 um you know he would even make it to the the finals of the g1 very early on uh but it was around 2013 that things started to get really interesting for naito because you know he was having some success as a singles competitor some high profile matches but in 2013 he came he comes back from an injury missing the previous wrestle kingdom and he started a feud with masato tanaka over the never open title and he would first challenge Masato Tanaka, which, quick shout out to Masato Tanaka, I think one of the most underrated Japanese wrestlers of all time. I love Masato Tanaka so much. He's so good. Highly recommend watching his matches with Naito, uh, if you don't know who Masato Tanaka is. But he would challenge Masato Tanaka, lose, enter the G1 that year in 2013, and he would win the G1 against Tanahashi, who just won this year's G1 again for the third time. Um, and this was the second year that they started the whole winner gets a contract to face the IWGP Heavyweight Champion at Wrestle Kingdom. And Naito still wanted to prove he can beat Tanaka, so he ended up fighting Masato Tanaka again after winning the G1, winning the Never Open title, and defending his chance to face um, Okada for the IWGP Heavyweight Championship at Wrestle Kingdom against Tanaka and Yujiro. But a funny thing happened is the fans of New Japan, they weren't all that into Naito and Okada being the main event. And New Japan actually held a vote for its fans to decide what the main event is. And the fans voted for the Tanahashi and Nakamura match for the IWGP Intercontinental Championship instead of Naito and Okada. And that's when things started to shift. The fans weren't embracing Naito. The fans were booing him more than when they were supposed to be cheering him because he was a babyface. Um, after Wrestle Kingdom 9, where Naito fought uh, AJ Styles and would lose against AJ Styles, he went back to Mexico and that's when he started working with the Los Ingobernables stable over in Mexico, which was founded by Rush. La Sombra and La Mascara. Now, La Sombra, if you are a WWE fan, NXT fan, you'll know, is Andrade Cien Almas. They were the original founders of Los Ingobernables, and Naito joined their group because he had a tag team relationship with La Sombra in New Japan. And when Naito came back, he came back as a representative of Los Ingobernables in New Japan, and the rest was kind of history. You know, and there's a lot, there's a lot more to mine and go into detail. Obviously, I don't have all that much time. I'm hitting the, uh, the faux Destino against Okada right now, and the match is going to be pretty much over. But I highly recommend watching sort of Naito's 
rise, fall, and then re-rise to where he is now. It's really fascinating. You know, and Rush, going back to Los Ingobernables, he sort of had the same path. He was a babyface, he was a technico, and the fans were sort of booing him more than embracing him. So he turned heel, he formed Los Ingobernables. Same thing with La Sombra, they formed it together. And, you know, I think it's really interesting in a day and age where we're having Roman Reigns once again against Brock Lesnar, and you just know how the fans are going to probably react to that. Both New Japan and CMLL ended up getting their biggest stars because they embraced what the fans were responding to with some of their top baby faces and then ended up making both those individuals, in this case Russ and Rush and Naito, even bigger stars. Naito is an amazing talent. I love watching Naito. I'm always excited to watch him. Right now he's in a feud with Jericho. He lost the IWGP Intercontinental Championship to Jericho uh, before the G1. So you know they're probably going to revisit that later on, maybe even at Wrestle Kingdom. And I believe that even down the line, we'll see Naito at another Wrestle Kingdom main event. Because unlike his first Wrestle Kingdom outing with Okada, where the fans weren't into it, last year, everyone was into it. I think everyone was expecting him to win, and he didn't. But I don't think it's the last time we'll see Naito in a main event at Wrestle Kingdom, for sure. Because, you know, he's, he's the man. <laughs> he really is. But that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to check out my other Virtual Wrestling 2 calls or my Virtual Wrestling 2 Let's Plays, you can check it out here on my channel. Once again, I am Be Better Gamer. You can follow me on Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook as Be Better Gamer. I hope you like this call. So until next time, you know what to do. Keep watching all the wrestling.